Hi, I'll bet you're here for a cost benefit analysis, right? Somebody assigned you to do a cost benefit analysis, your boss, your professor, your girlfriend, maybe, and you have no idea how to do it. You're not even sure what the hell it is. That's okay. Cost benefit analysis has some tricky math behind it, but it's not too difficult to do, especially if you have the right tools. That's what I'm here for. I have developed an Excel spreadsheet. It's basically a template, something that you download. You load it up on your computer. You just enter in your data and it does the analysis for you. It's free. There's a link for it right below this video. You can go there now and get it and you're all set. But you might want me to walk you through it. So I will do that right now. Let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. This looks like it. Okay, this template has various pages. You can see the tabs along the bottom here. So we've got the cover, we've got the instructions, we've got costs, we've got benefits, and we've got summary. As far as the cover, you see that this is the cost benefit analysis template and some legal mumbo jumbo you don't really need to worry about. The next page gives you instructions, helps you create your own cost benefit analysis of any project. It provides a net present value, which is a mathematical value that you can use to judge between various options. Gives you an internal rate of return, ditto, and a payback schedule. When will you get your initial investment back? Now there's a paid version, which you can edit. Uh, the free version, you can enter your data, but you can't really edit it other than that. So it's set up on a year by year basis. It could be modified if you have the, the paid version. It currently comes with 10 columns. So you can have 10 years worth of analysis. Uh, you can make longer ones with the, the paid pro version. You can easily get the paid version. There's instructions at uh, the last page. We'll get to that later. Basically the steps to create your cost benefit analysis is step one, go to the costs page, enter your costs. Go step two, go to the benefits page, enter your benefits. And step three, go to the summary to see the analysis and the outputs. So costs, I have got room for six elements of costs here. I have it pre-filled with some random data. You can edit these fields. You don't have to call it element one, you can call it whatever you want. I have it element one and I, I have the manager of that task, Bill Smith. Element two, I said Ed White. These don't have to be people. You could have materials, you could have uh, overhead, you could have rent, whatever categories you want, you get six categories to fill them in. And you fill them in by year. This one's arbitrarily set up to be 2009. Uh, you can put whatever year you want in there. And then you enter the costs you expect to incur the first year. And the costs you expect to incur in each of these categories for the other years. The program will give you the summary of costs per year and the grand total. So the instructions in detail here, enter the first year of your program in cell C8. This one says 2009. Enter the names of your program elements in, common a, in column A and extra information in column B if you like, et cetera. So once you get all that in, those are your costs. Now you have to enter the benefits you expect. So benefit data entry page, we've only got one, two, three, four categories here um, with the pro version. By the way, the pro version, the paid version is only $40. You got $40, right? But if you don't have $40, you'll have to live with one, two, three, four elements of benefits. Usually we only have one, right? Profit we expect. Anyway, for each year, we will put in the money we expect from each of those areas of revenue. I arbitrarily listed here cost reductions, enhanced revenues, labor savings, decreased overhead. Okay, and then it will sum them up for you. I also put in a confidence factor here. You can edit this. I've got it at 100%. But if you're not sure you're going to get these values, you might want to put something less than 100 here. Just lets you hedge your bets a little. Anyway, it totals up the benefits to be expected and gives you the grand total. Once we've got all that entered, our job is done. The spreadsheet does the rest. We go to the summary page. It gives us the undiscounted cash flows, meaning the actual expenditures we made each year. Then it gives us the benefits. In other words, the, summa the summation of the data on the benefits page. Then it gives us the net cash flow, meaning it just subtracts the costs from the benefits. 
like most projects, we see we have negative values in the early years, then at some point we break even, and then we have positive cash flow in the outer years. We can put in a discount rate. I put 7% here. This is the cost of money. Generally, money has some cost. If you have money tied up, you're paying interest on it or losing interest on it. Typically, we'll put in some percentage there. 7% isn't unusual. 5% is good. Whatever. You probably, if somebody assigned you to do a cost-benefit analysis, they probably told you what the discount rate or interest rate should be. Anyway, once we know this interest rate, we can what they call discount the cash flow, meaning $1,400 five years from now isn't as good as $1,400 now. So when we discount it, it becomes a smaller number. So this yellow area discounts these cash flows. It adjusts them basically for the interest that we would be paying on them. Now, down here is one of the, the two, two of the most important outputs of a cost benefit analysis the net present value and the internal rate of return. You'll see here we've got a net present value of two and a half million dollars. What does that mean? That means this cash flow of this investment that we're analyzing is just as good mathematically as two and a half million dollars right now. We don't have it all right now, but it's monetarily, mathematically just as good. So the present value of our cash flow is equivalent to 2.579 million right now. Internal rate of return of this cash flow that we entered is 21%. What does that mean? That means it's as if we took this money and put it into a bank account that paid 21%. That's not bad. Um, if this number had come out to be, say, 2%, we might decide we're not, we don't like this investment. I can get 2% anywhere. 21%, you can't get 21% anywhere. So if this investment gives us 21% rate of return, that's pretty darn good. So if you're asked to do a cost benefit analysis, you probably want to return the net present value and the internal rate of return. And that's why these are provided. Now, there's one more output that we need to talk about. We got undiscounted cash flows, which shows our expenditures and our revenues. We've got our discounted cash flows, which adjust for the time value of money. In other words, the interest rate. But the most important one is the payback schedule. These are the years. We started with 2009, remember? It shows that we've got money sunk deeper and deeper for the first few years. Then we start making money back. And right about at the end of 2015, we break even, meaning we've gotten back all the money we invested and it's still coming. So this tells us when the break-even point is. We will be profitable at the end of 2015 if we started this in 2009. So the net present value, the internal rate of return, and this payback schedule are the three things you're going to report to your boss or your professor or your girlfriend or whoever told you to do this cost-benefit analysis in the first place. Now, the next page is what I call soft stuff. It sort of describes other things you might want to think about if you want to do this investment or not. Because there's always things other than money, other than cold hard figures and math. So there's some things we need to think about and you can read those on your own. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know. I do provide a handy amortization table here. If you're wondering how much money you owe on a car loan or a house mortgage, this will help you do that. <clears throat> really doesn't have much to do with cost benefit analysis but I stuck it in here just as a little bonus. And finally, if you decide this free template isn't good enough for you, in other words, 10 years isn't enough and five co cost categories and four benefit categories isn't enough for you, then you might want to edit the file. It's locked from editing in the free version, but our final page here says unlocking. Click on that, we have where you can go. To purchase an editable version of this file, go to the following link. This will take you to a form where you can use PayPal or your credit card. And for $40, you will get an instant download of the same file, but not locked from editing. As long as you're an Excel jockey, you can edit it to your heart's content. And if you wanna know anything else, here's the general <clears throat> homepage for all of my templates and everything else that I have for sale. Feel free to visit that as well. Okay. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed your time here.
be sure to check the link below the video to uh, download your free version of the template. The free version has the link to let you buy the full version if you decide you want to. And you can check out some of our other templates while you're at it at our homepage. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything else. Thanks.